Today at thepit.com, we're looking to answer a common collector question, especially when it comes to investing in cards uh, for the long term. So today's example, we're going to be talking about uh, the Derek Jeter 1993 Upper Deck Rookie Card. So uh, the question we're looking to answer here today is, what is the best form of a card to buy uh, if you're looking to invest for the long term? So uh, of course, there's you know, several options. There's the always the possibility of only collecting the card in PSA 10. You could collect the card in quantity at PSA 9, or you could also decide to instead uh, collect the raw card. So this is a good example of a card that uh, people are looking to collect in both uh, graded and raw form. So of course, Derek Jeter... Um, will be entering the Hall of Fame uh, next year. Uh, originally, he was going to be inducted in 2020, but because of COVID, uh, the ceremony was pushed off till 2021. So he'll be inducted into the Hall of Fame along with any new inductees next year. So uh, so it seems like the uh, the cycle that, you know, where uh, cards tend to sell right up to uh, the player being inducted into the Hall of Fame uh, it seems like that cycle might be a little bit longer this year. And while many Derek Jeter cards have already uh, seen significant gains over the past year or so, especially leading up to the announcement that he would be entering the Hall of Fame, uh, there are some cards that haven't quite necessarily caught up to the others yet, and one of those is the 93 Upper Deck. Uh, so so the question is, Is should you be buying this card raw? Should you be buying this card in PSA 9, which is mint? Or should you pony up the cash to buy a PSA 10? So the question here today isn't to uh, actually tell you which one is the best. Um, but today's uh, goal is to give you the information that you need to be able to make a decision that works for you and your in your individual collection or in investment goals. So the first thing that you do whenever you're looking at a car to buy, uh, especially in quantity, when you're looking to acquire you know many of these cards in order to uh, hopefully get a return on investment later. Uh, so the first thing you want to do is take a look at the population report for that card. So you go to psacard.com slash POP and you can find the population for that card. So the interesting thing about this Derek Jeter card is that there are plenty of them graded by PSA, over 8,500. Uh, but when you take a look at the breakdown, you'll notice that uh, the mint and gem mint copies are actually relatively rare compared to how many actual overall submissions there are. So... So even out of 8,500, there's only 738 of those have been graded to 10. So to put it another way, uh, less than 1 in 10 actually come back as a PSA 10. Uh, whereas with the 9s, there's about 2,000 of those. So one uh, less than 1 in 4 actually get graded a 9. So the vast majority of, of these particular raw cards that get graded uh, you know, nearly half of those come back as a PSA 8. So let's, to put it another way, if um, if you were to buy 10 raw copies of this card and then were to send them to PSA, you know, I mean, obviously without without being, you know, super scrutinous about, you know, the different, the different aspects of the card, such as the centering or the edges, corners, or the surface quality of the card you know, if you were just to buy you know 10 cards listed as near mint and send them in um, you know the likelihood is you only get one of those back as a psa 10 maybe two of them as a psa 9 and then the vast majority of them as psa 8s and so obviously you know you you don't necessarily really want a psa 8 because a psa 8 is the equivalent of a near mint card um so you know, a lot of times a PSA 8 is not worth much more than a, uh, a raw card. <clears throat> in some cases, in some cases they are uh, simply because sometimes 8s are even more difficult to acquire. So this particular card is actually very hard to find in a PSA 9 or PSA 10. So the reason that that matters is, is that when you're looking to collect a card uh, for the long term, um, you want to decide, okay, first of all, what's your budget? And then second of all, you know, what, 
you know, what is the price point for each of these cards and does it match up with the proportion of, you know, of those you could reasonably expect to buy. So for example, uh, if you were to buy a Derek Jeter card at $9, you'd be looking to spend $90 on 10 copies. Now a <clears throat> PSA 9, a PSA 9, you know, right now you can get for about $50. So you could get two of these for the price of, a, you know, for $100. So if you had $100, you could buy, you know, <clears throat> two of these if you could if you had a hundred dollars you could buy you know maybe 11 of the Derek Jeter no, um, yeah so 11 of the Derek Jeter and then if you were to go and to get a PSA 10 however uh, you'd be looking at over three hundred dollars so you would have to invest three hundred dollars in a single copy of a card um, but then you would have the guaranteed PSA 10. So the idea is, is to take a look at the percentage and to figure out okay well if I buy 11 of this card uh, you know, the chances of me, you know, if I sent those in to be graded, which, you know, even with a, a submission service, uh, even a less expensive submission service, you're still looking at you know, around $10 a card, maybe a little bit more. Uh, so you'd be looking at, you know, maybe 100 or $110 to get them graded. Um, so what would you, th what would you expect the return to be? So you probably expect maybe one of those to come back a PSA 10. And so your total, you know, if you get what, you know, if you spend about $200 getting them graded, spending about $100 on the copies and you get one PSA 10, um, <clears throat> you know, obviously um, that would pay for itself. Um, of course, PSA 10s have often have, you know, a significant premium attached to them. So, um, you know, a PSA 10, uh, you know, could, could easily be worth, you know, a 30 to 30 to 50 percent more than you might expect it to be worth, uh, simply because the, uh, the demand for PSA 10s is always going to be higher than for PSA 9s. But recently, and actually, the interesting thing is, is that what's actually been the hottest of these versions on the pit has actually been the PSA 9. And the reason for that being is that, well, first of all, they're a lower price point. But second of all, um, as we pointed out in the pop report, uh, there's really only, you know, really only about, you know, two and a half out of 10, about only you know, between 20 and 25% of these cards actually grade a, a PSA 9. So to put it another way, if you bought four of these and said, say you spent you know, $36, um, you know, you could only reasonably expect one of those to come back a PSA 9. Um, now, of course, um, <clears throat> that's a little bit that, that, you know, obviously you could, you know, buy the cards and then only choose what you think is the cleanest copy to get graded. Of course, I mean, you don't necessarily just have to blindly send in, you know, <laughs> a certain number of copies. But what I'm just saying is that reasonably you can expect, um, that sort of, you know, that sort of return. So, so really the PSA nine is actually a pretty, a pretty strong, um, a pretty strong, um, pretty strong buy right now at $50. You know, you expect if, if to just buy, you know, to buy four copies to essentially guarantee yourself a nine, uh, you would, you know, paying $50 to get that guarantee is actually worth it um, because it would essentially cost you that many raw in raw copies and, you know, significantly more in grading fees. So the nine is actually a very good, very good value. And, and, and as we said, you know, the 10 um, is also you know, the 10 is also a pretty good value simply because there are just so few of them, you know, you would have to buy probably 11 copies to, to guarantee to yourself a 10 and why, and, and, you know, and why take, you know, necessarily the risk and have to wait for them to come back when you can just have the 10. So all three of these, you know, considering the numbers are actually a pretty good, a pretty good value and they all have, you know, room to, you know, grow in the long term, especially considering, you know, Derek Jeter, you know, a legend of the, for the Yankees. So, um, but to, just to kind of give you an idea, you know, I'm not, not, you know, advocating buying a particular copy over another, um, but to just give you an idea that whenever you're stuck for trying to figure out, uh, you know, should I buy raw? Should I buy PSA 9? Should I buy PSA 10? Now you have the tools uh, to answer that question. And, you know, there's a little bit more that goes into it than that. But, you know, when you're trying to make a decision, a snap decision, 
um, definitely consult the pop report, take a look at the prices, consider how much, how many copies you would need to get to guarantee yourself a certain grade or, you know, to, to generally guarantee. Of course, you could, uh, you know, be very discerning and only send, you know, the f best couple of copies. But still, you know, why, you know, if you decide that it's actually more worth it to just go ahead and buy the PSA 9, um, you know, and that, and, and that does seem to be the general consensus with this card. And keep in mind that the, uh, the, your decision making process is completely dependent on the individual card. And it varies from set to set and even card to card, um, how, how these cards are graded in the long term. So, so hopefully, uh, this video helped you to, um, be able to decide, you know, if you've been, if you've been looking to collect a particular card, uh, in, in raw PSA 9 or PSA 10, or even, you know, BGS, you can check Be Beckett's grading pop report as well. Um, but you know, now you know that now you kind of have that line of thinking to be able to make that decision. So, uh, so to, to you know, top it off, uh, which of these cards would you buy? Would you buy, you know, as many raw copies of this card as you could afford? Would you instead buy, you know, multiple copies of the PSA 9 or would you, um, simply decide to invest in the PSA 10. Love to hear your thoughts on that. Hope that you enjoy this video and hope that you got something out of it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and we'll be back soon with more, uh, <coughs> more hard videos. Happy collecting everyone.